Welcome back. So does sex influence your work performance? That's a age old question, right? Sexologist Dr. Lee Moore Blockman here with the latest study, which we have <laughs> every week. So does it or doesn't it? To be or not to be? Isn't it interesting that they keep on studying these things? What triggers us? What works? Well, it just shows us on work? everybody's mind, you yeah, know? I mean, absolutely. I think it's like, don't you think it's kind of like sociologically a sign of the times? Yes, you know, that people are more is. open about it? Absolutely. People can stop talking about it. And the thing is, it's very interesting because the U.S. employees probably won't adopt something that was offered by, I don't know if you read, but a few months ago, a councilman from Sweden actually suggested that people, the employees, the municipal employees of a town, would be granted uh, a once a week, a one hour of subsidized sex. For them to go <laughs> subsidize, they like they get paid. It. Yes, they get paid to go <laughs> home and have sex, and it's legal. It's yes, not, it's not, not only no, and there's no trigger. There's nothing that has to do with a joke or anything. He really believed that it's gonna it's gonna enhance productivity in terms of work and enhance population in a declining, you know, populated town and right. everything. So he suggested it. I don't think it went through, but the idea of it is that very interesting. And the scientists took it into account and they examined 159 couples uh, they were employees and they asked them over a, a branch of two weeks to answer surveys twice a day regarding their productivity at work and regarding the, their regarding their sexual habits and of course what were the results um, you read and it wasn't that surprising that people that engaged in sex came back to work the next day very rejuvenated very happy their part of everybody else is like what's wrong yeah what's wrong um, what what's, so happy? what's the spring in their step what's going on <laughs> so it's not a myth it's actually really true the thing that was interesting really that it lingered over at least 24 hours so if you had sex two days before it was still sustaining which is very so now, interesting so now is that medically based because of oxytocin and endorphins and all yes. these things released so, yeah so a bunch of things so for instance they uh first of all they found that it's it applies to both men and women even after they controlled it for things that can influence your productivity at work like marital satisfaction or work quality it was still it was still related immediately to sex that their productivity went up and also it kind of you know kills the whole hypothesis that women don't really need that much sex to be productive yes indeed it enhanced their uh, peace of mind their productivity their sustainability they were much more agreeable to do things so work. Then, isn't there like a flip side though that like when you have all this like you're kind of more distracted and like still thinking about it and I mean is there's got to be an element of that of um, also being distracted yes you know? yes yes it could it could work and I want to get to something a little nugget at the end that relates to this yeah. but I want to say that the, the opposite of course was very relevant and nobody's talking about it the taking home work actually really impinges on your life on your sex life right it really is a problem and for instance in France they passed a law that bars people from dealing with their uh, emails from work after hours and really promotes disconnectivity really to do something about it and as you started and said you know oxytocin dopamine are you know uh, enhancing mood so if you are coming to work after engaging in sex you're of course in a much better mood and it, it brings up you know the, the the chance that you're gonna be successful but if we're talking about uh, and, and I want to say that if you promote something that is a potential career advantage if you push people to have have sex and both employees and employers should sustain this uh, strive for you know releasing the, the, the need to continue on with work 24 hours especially in the US where it's very accepted mm -hmm. but if we're talking about sex and work how about sex at work how about what do you it? Think? Yeah, does that study encourage like inner office romances yeah well you know they examine it <laughs> you have a different kind of drama because if it doesn't work out then like there's but a no chance. one gets anything done because right, you're like too busy being upset. That's true. That's true. I was talking to some people outside and they said, but Business Week actually released a survey. They covered 2,500 people and they said that 85% said that they wanted to hook up with someone from the office. 54% actually did, but only 20% with the boss. So they're aware of what's going on and, you know, just enjoying life and work. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. And Shavuotov. Uh, too. All right, meanwhile, a London design student has found an innovative way to recycle. He's literally turning plastic bags into skateboards. Here's more on the story. How many plastic bags does it take to make a skateboard? About 1,500, according to designer Jason Knight. He's built this metal press as an ingenious solution to the scourge of waste plastic. It melts and molds plastic into skateboard decks. 
So I thought if if people have like a tangible reward, like a skateboard or something physical that they they immediately get in a reward for recycling, then it would incentivize people to do so. He hopes local communities will take up the idea, encouraging young people to collect discarded plastic in exchange for use of a machine like his. You take the shredded material, you load it into the mold. The, the base of the mold heats up to about 200 degrees. It takes about between an hour and two hours to melt. And then, yeah, you just leave it to set. It takes about three hours to set. And then you take it out and just finish it with, um, finish it with grip tape and uh, sanding the edges. What's left is a strong but flexible board, each with a unique marbled look. Knight himself is not a skateboarder, but at a skate park on London's South Bank, there was great interest. People really like the idea. No one's seen anything like it before. Uh, they, they, they like the flexibility because um, it, it means you can sort of jump higher. Because of the, the, they call it the pop. Because of the pop, you, you can jump quite high. Because it's got quite an elastic property, so it allows you to jump really high easily. Knight is now looking to improve his design and plans to offer his method as an online tutorial. Plastic waste clogs up landfill sites and pollutes our oceans. While their impact would be small, in their own way, skateboarders could help reduce a growing environmental problem. All right, a new world record for the longest indoor free fall. Skydivers Steph Millet and Manu Sarazin beat the Guinness World Record inside a vertical wind tunnel in northern Spain. The duo flew uninterrupted for seven hours, 15 minutes and 13 seconds to be exact. The flight competition raised money for a charity that helps families and children with special needs. And an underwater music festival making a splash in the Florida Keys. A local radio station broadcast four hours of custom programming in the National Marine Sanctuary. The playlist included songs from The Little Mermaid, Jaws, and The Beatles' Yellow Submarine. The message of the event was to protect uh, the Low Key Reef, which is part of the world's third largest living coral reef. 400 divers and snorkelers gathered underwater to listen. And one thing I know as a scuba diver, sound is much louder underwater. It is. It travels in a different way. So I'm sure it was very loud, as you heard. And coming up next, an actor filmmaker from New York joins us live to talk about an inspirational new project. We'll be back after the break.